What's great about um, our portfolio is it's very premium. And we have... And you want to keep that. And we want to really keep that. Because if you look at... No two buck check? No. <laughs> well, you know, good for Trader Joe's. Okay, so, but what I tell you is, um, when you think about consumption of alcohol, right, we all don't drink the same thing every time we drink. When, we're, when, when we want to celebrate, we want to drink champagne, right? We want to just relax and unwind, we might want a glass of bourbon, right? When we want to impress somebody, we might want to take out a very high-end cognac, right? Mm -hmm. Nobody drinks the same thing. Why they drink is the context in which they're in. So when you have the right premium portfolio that goes across all these different occasions, you actually have an advantage. And our strategy at Pernod Ricard is literally to activate more brands than our competition with the same cost to serve. Yeah. Huh. So, but you have to do that if you know the science behind the demand, which brand belongs in which occasion, so you don't cannibalize yourself. So that so is- So certain brands are really out front and center at certain yeah. times of the year, if you will? So, so, so for instance, during St. Patrick's Day, it's Jameson, right. right? In the summer, you're drinking Malibu, right? right? So there are seasons, there are occasions, sometimes some occasions are year long, right? So you have to then devise a portfolio and that's how you decide which brands you buy and which ones you sell. It, your, your business model, it's like that Chumbawamba song, you know, you got a whiskey drink, a vodka drink, a cider drink, <laughs> you a got it. song. But, uh, <laughs> <My freaking. laughs> but at, at the same time, you know, we all do drink different drinks at different times for different occasions, but also just in general, I get the impression that liquor consumers are a fickle group, you know, <laughs> One year it's craft beer is the hot thing. The next year it's seltzers. Yeah. Uh, the next year it's yeah. fine wine. So how do you get ahead of that as yeah. an executive in this industry? So we actually monitor the trends around how people are drinking in segments. Um, so on average, in any given month, a consumer will drink about 45 drinks, okay? That, that includes everything, okay? A, a month? A month, 45. right? <sighs> so. Now, I'm out of that's those, a Friday night I am for a you, mega, no, I'm a mega lightweight, but go ahead. <laughs> but what we've seen, and this is on average, right? Some people drink way less. Yeah. So what you see on average is before the pandemic, 45 of those drinks were, 20 of them were beer, okay? After the pandemic, they've lost two whole drinks. There's only 18 of them now for beer. Mm -hmm. And what gained mm -hmm. was your spirit RTDs. Uh, spirits themselves, wine also lost. Ready to drink? Yeah, it's on fire. It's on fire because people are walking away from beer. Then they went to malted RTDs, but they're like, eh, taste isn't so great. How much is that growing, the RTD? Ready oh, to my drink? God. It's, for you guys? For us, it's it's exponential growth. It's like 50%. Like, it's, it's huge. Year over year? Yeah, it's huge. <gasps> but off a small base? Off a small base. Okay. Off a small base. Okay. Could it be a bigger base? It could very much a bigger base. I mean, we have RTDs in Absolute. We have it in uh, Malibu, uh, Jameson. And at Absolute, we're just about to launch our Ready to Drink with Ocean Spray. You know, so you think about, you know, we were talking about the, you know, the the, the wonderful cocktail that yeah. we're all used to, which is the Cosmo. And so it's, uh, it's here, here's the big thing. Consumers post-pandemic want cocktails conveniently, period. That's what it is. Yeah, I'm not a good, I know people who are really into it and they get the gear and they're like, yeah. love it. I'm like, uh, just give me the bottle. Let me throw it over some ice. Yeah, I'll tell you a great example. So this is, a, it helps you understand the occasion. Women will get together, call it once a week, they'll have book club, whatever, they'll yeah. drink their glass of Chardonnay, and that's fine, because it's easy to pour, you know, after week after week of Chardonnay, you're like, I really want a cocktail. <laughs> but nobody wants to make a cocktail, so we launched Ready to Drink Altos Margarita. And literally, all you do is pour it like you would wine, and it's an instant margarita, and I'm telling you, this thing is bar quality. And so now we're sourcing right. from wine, as a, as a tequila. It's pretty wild. Like, you just get your head around it. But I I sampled some over the summer and um, was really surprised at how good they were. Listen, we'd be remiss. We're Bloomberg. Booze, yeah. great leading indicator, especially because you play into the premium side of things, of how the luxury market is going right now. How are the numbers in terms of this economy and then going into next year? How would you describe it? How are you seeing it? Yeah, so, you know. Any slowdown? It, well, we're, we're getting past COVID, right? And COVID was a big boom. People were stocking up, et cetera, et cetera. The economy has been tough. Um, we're seeing retailers actually bring down their inventories a bit because mm -hmm, it's mm -hmm. the cost of capital with interest rates is mm -hmm. really, really hard. Well, that's interesting. Um, we have the whole we have that whole global supply chain crisis. Now that's over. So what's what's happening is we're seeing resiliency in consumers drinking. So you know the sellout and what people are consuming, but now the inventory situation is kind of you know kind of settling out. 
So when you look at the numbers, you know, from a net sales or a shipments perspective, it's lower than actually what people are buying because there's a little bit of over inventory in the industry. But if you ask me long term, you, you said those numbers in the beginning of the program, like about 6% right. CAGR, right? Right. Pre-pandemic, that's we were going 4 or 5% every f year. In the pandemic, it was double digits, right? Yeah. Uh, this is now the post-COVID kind of shakeout, and I think as you move forward, right. you're going to go right back to that 4 